one of the people who have played a big positive role in Kenya's history is one Geoffrey Griffin. Geoffrey Griffin, in the history of philanthropic Kenya, he, 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 play, he plays a leading role. He was born on 15th June 1933 in Kitale. He attended Kitale Primary. And later on, he attended a Prince of Wales School. That was in 1945, out of, up to 1950. Now, for, for those who, who were born later, Prince of Wales is now known as Nairobi School. He was there from 1945 to 1950. That is six years. Uh, then he joined Survey of Kenya. Uh, after finishing the survey of Kenya, he then later joined King's African Rifle. He rose to the rank of Major. He rose to the rank of Major, and that was uh, during the uh, Mau Mau days. He later left service, and when he left service, he started rehabilitating Mau Mau fighters. This one led him being suspected by everybody. So even today some of us when whatever we do you you you, you go to this camp you find uh, they suspect that you are whatever you're doing you're doing because of this camp. And if you go to the other camp you find that they suspect that what you're doing you're doing because of this camp. So, uh, the colonial government suspected him to be a collaborator of Mau Mau or an associate of Mau Mau. And Mau Mau people thought that he was a collaborator of the colonial government. Uh, that one made him uh, towards the... Uh, some people say it is July, others say it's November, but they all agree that in 1959, he left uh, the, the rehabilitation of more, more adults and started rehabilitating youths. Started rehabilitating youths together with some two other uh, Africans. Uh, he started Stare Boy Center. He started Stare Boy Center when Shell BP Company gave him two hearts, two hearts to rehabilitate the youths. Initially, it was a, a sort of a tivet place for the youths. Uh, you can see that uh, Shell BP was associated with the color blue and red, and that is why Stare Boys has uh, forever had the three colors of blue, red, and black. That was, uh, uh, that was either July or November 1959. He continued with that, and that developed into three institutions for Stare Boy Center. One was the primary school. Two was the secondary school, which ran from Form 1 to Form 6. And three, a technical high school. Now, Stare was founded in a very unique way. It was founded in such a way that uh, I don't know whether it is still that way today, but during my time in the mid 70s, you'd find that 80%, over 80%, were kids from very poor families. But then the 20% were from well off families, whereby Taking your child there, it was guaranteed that the child would pass with flying colors. But at what price? You had to commit yourself that you just don't pay fees for your son, but you pay fees for two or three more orphans 
chokoras and so on. That is the uniqueness about that. So I, I remember there was a boy whose father was a permanent secretary in the 60s and 70s. He was a I've forgotten his name. The boy, we were with him in Kajado PBS primary boarding school, and his father was a permanent secretary. And then later, when he joined Form 1, he joined the Starry Boy Center. And when I tried to ask, I thought Starry Boy Center was meant for um, was meant for orphans and so on. But then uh, he he gave me literature, which showed that uh, no, the condition for him to join that school was for his father, who was a permanent secretary, a PS, to pay for his fees and also pay fees for three more kids, second school, whatever. Uh, the school went on well. The nini, the, the patron for Stare Boy Center was Mike Kibaki, and we had people like, we had people like uh, Patrick Shaw and others. Then in uh, 1964, him together with uh, Josiah Mwangi Karioki formed the National Youth Service. He formed the National Youth Service, which and he became its first director up to 1988. He became its first director up to 1988 when he retired and became uh, and handed over to Major Langat. F a former army man. Now you'll notice that from 1964 to 1988, uh, Geoffrey Griffin was a director of two places. He was a director of Stare Boy Center. At the same time, he was the director of NYS. The work that he w used to work in, uh, in uh, Stare Boy Center was free. He never got a single pen for the time he, you know he started it Stare Boy Center was started in 1959 and he died in 2005 those are over half a century uh, 50 years plus, times 12 that is 600 months he never got a single salary out of the 600 but for the national service that was a civil servant's job and he was getting this is how he used to operate at 7 a.m., he is in Ruaraka, attending to NYS, up to around 3 p.m. That is when he will rush to Stare Boy Center and work from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Two full-time job daily, five days a week. Uh, of course... In his capacity on both he, their occasion, that is the ideal time for him. That was for the normal time, but there are days he would change. My father was was seconded from the police service to the NYS to head the discipline department. And there were even occasions they would travel throughout the country visiting NYS camps all over. So you would find... Uh, and then there are occasions when he would be needed abroad, mostly in London, for fundraising for Stare Boy Center. So the example I've given is just a simple example of an ordinary Monday to Friday. You wake up, rush to Ruaraka, work full time in Ruaraka, clear everything up to 3 p.m. Then from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., he would be working full time in Stare Boy Center. Uh, he died on 28th June uh, 2005. And when he died, uh, there were push, there was pressure for Stare Boy Center to be named Griffin Boy Center. But <laughs> he carried a secret from the day he founded Stare Boy Center in 1959 to the time he died, he carried a secret that only upon his death did people 
discover that secret without him telling anybody. The badge, the badge of Staray Boy Center is a lion formation that that uh, lion formation is called Griffin. Now you know. This is one of the uh, most impactful leaders we have ever had in Kenya. 